fists are burning. The tale of the Berkeley Oakland Hills fire from an SCA perspective in a in alliterative verse after the manner of Gawain and the Green Knight. The mists are burning, burning, the sun a bloody coin. From north and south come spearmen in bitter battle join. None can know the outcome, the cost in lives and land. In the darkened nooning, how can Grey Haven stand? I tell now the tale of the strong ones, the spearmen, who fought against the foe and the fire that raged. Stout was their striving, long was their labor, no victory certain, and bitter the fray. Day dawned in brightness, sweet were the breezes, no sage warned of danger and no doom was foretold. In rest and rejoicing on hill and in valley all welcomed October's good harvest and cheer. But deep in the dales gleamed an eye of red ruin, a shard from the anvil of the Wayland tain flight, and trees as its torches the spark blossomed baleful till billowing banners of smoke stained the sky. Soon all the valley knew of the danger, and fear ran as high as the furious flame. For summer had scorched the grass to gold tinder, and quicker than lightning were steadings consumed. Swift came the spearmen, brisk to the battle, shining in noonlight, fair-faced and fell, casting strong spear floods against ramparts of ruin, wise to the wheel and the ways of the foe. High on those hills stand the halls of great heroes, Sarandip stately, Greyhaven proud, hearths graced with gold and with richness of learning, the Tower of Claremont, the jewel of all. Brands borne by wind blasts send spark children spreading, and great grows the glow and smoke smothers the sun. Ranged on the housetops, young heroes stand vanguard, wetting the roofs against arrows of flame. Flee, cried the townsman, the terror o'ertakes us. None may stand fast against this furious fiend. And the lords of Grey Haven cried out in anger, Who will defend them, our hearth and our hall? The spearmen are valiant, but narrow their numbers. No match for this bane fire. Spake then the earl, the horn call cries loudly for aid in this hour. Make haste to our succor, our hills we defend and summon to slaughter our comrades come quickly from land's end and hilltop, from valley and shore. Many the men the war cry are heeding, lending their hands and their hearts to the fray. Here is no battle for Huskarl, heroes. This striving for spearmen, defend you your own. The great glaives and engines are gathering grimly. Hinder them not, or destruction is sure. Obeying the earl, with anger abating, the young lords descended, still loath, from the height, protecting in, protection invoking from a roof tree to rootstone, calling on Odin and Thor to take heed. And Greyhaven's lady, her household close gathered, riches must winnow that worth might be saved. Hunters and hounds are led leashed to the wagons, and carefully cradled are books, harps, and swords. Moment by moment does danger march deadly. Goods, gear, and gold must be handled with haste. Little indeed beyond lives now are looked for, and halting and heavy go wanes from the hold. The perilous passage of hilltop and trackway is made midst the press of near neighbors and kin. So much to abandon to fierce fires feeding, sorrow unceasing, <laughs> treasures untold. All the great steadings of Claremont's green hillsides left to their fortune, and many to burn. The foe roars, relentless, gaining and growing. The spearman strives stoutly grim on the ground. Bitter and baleful, the sunlight strikes bloody. As capricious and cruel, the wind laughs in scorn. Weary and weakened, the warriors tremble. But onward they labor to beat back the storm. The mists are burning, burning. The sun a bloody coin. From north and south comes spirit Come spearmen, in ceaseless striving join. None can know the outcome, the cost in lives and land. As sunset stains the hillside, how can Greyhaven stand? Hyathis of Skara has come forth to offer the shelter of Markheim to Greyhaven kin. 
Ties of both blood and of friendship must answer such desperate need as this danger makes known. The folk of the flatlands have rallied to rescue their cousins and kinsmen of heights dispossessed. The great gates of Markheim stand open widely to Edwin Berserker, young Ian the Bone. Stout swords defended, the book press bestowed. The hunters and hounds are both petted and praised. And Alice and Lady embraces Diana as harbor guard harps within welcoming walls. Lives are assured here, the fury held distant. All must await now the end of the fray. But word now comes warning of Serendip's peril, where Theresia von Tux has been warding alone, calls now for comrades to aid her endeavor and back to the battle go warriors bold. For Hilary, mistress of lore and of knowledge in distant domains as she travels this day, little can ken the destruction and danger that threatens her holdings, her hearth and her home. Lord Velt von Markheim, Eathis of Skara, the Lord of Theresia of Rivendell Fair, valiant venture once more the Inferno, set forth in foray to Serendip's aid. Passing steep places where spearmen keep counsel, they gain the hard hill hillside midst deafening din. The fire, harsh, harrows the trees and the houses, but standing are Serendip's towers unscathed. Broad beamed the door, but more doughty the Danemen, more than proud portals their purpose would pierce. Now gathering gold, the rolls and the records, rescued the riches the steward holds dear. Returning, arms laden, Eathis and Markheim are greeted with gladness, though grey with smoke grime. The ashes slow sifting is searing with sorrow, for many face fortune more fierce in the fray. The household of Hussey lies high on the hillside, nigh to Greyhaven's green gardens and walls. Brushed by the burning, Lord Robert the upright took the great spear his wife's sire laid by, and defying all danger, keeping close counsel, pressed by the peril but never dismayed, Lord Robert, unceasing, has kept clear his thanehold, a hero of heroes, undaunted and bold. For the mists are burning, burning, the sun a bloody coin, from north and south come spearmen, and in night-long battle join. None can know the outcome, the cost in lives and land. When dawn returns the daylight, will grey haven still stand. Dark now the dales, dim in the twilight. Black from the burning are hills that gleamed gold. Nightfall, relentless, draining the daylight, makes even the bravest ones blind in the strife. But still, on the hillside, the tower of Claremont shines white and unravaged in its ruin and spoil. Spearmen speed onward, no least light avoiding, wielding white waters and weapons of war. Darkness brings dangers the dawn might hold distant, all outcomes uncertain throughout the high hills. Strong through the hours of starlight, the spearmen hammered at horror as haunted men dreamed, or watchful and wakeful held vigil the victims, waiting for dawn to bring news of the fray. The long night now ended, the terror o'ertaken, the spearmen victorious ceased the stern spray. Gray-faced and grim, gaunt from their labors, their spears bent and broken, so boldly they strove. The warriors, weary, bring news glad and grievous. The brunt of the battle is broken. Daylight dispels the fell fire defeated. The deadly sun shard is returned to the forge. The toll of the terror now may be taken. Twenty and eight to number the slain. Heroes uncounted have aided the armies, bending their backs to banish the bane. Lord Velt von Markheim, Edwin Berserker, Yathis of Skara, young Ian the Bold, James the Undaunted, Lord Robert of Hussey, Earls and earldomen, spearmen and thanes, the list is yet longer than my tongue may tell it, but deeds do remain where the names be untold. The mists are burning, burning, the sun a bloody coin. From north and south came spearmen, in victorious battle joined. Grievous is the outcome, great cost in lives and land. But Serendip has seen the dawn, and Greyhaven still stands.